Hey everybody, my name is John Jacobs with At The Growing Ups Table. I want to welcome you to the Nuns With Nunchucks pre-show part one. We are here at Rookie Mage Games HQ in Columbus, Ohio with its founder, Jordan McLaughlin. And we are two weeks away from the Nuns With Nunchucks launch. And this game is going to be launching on Tuesday, March 28th. 2023 and we want to talk about the game we want to talk to jordan but before we talk about nuns with nunchucks we want to go backwards in time and talk about rookie mage games so jordan talk to us about rookie mage games what made you come up with this idea what made you become a game designer just give us the whole story all right yeah so like this all kind of started in uh 2018 um me and my friends were me and my cousins were kind of sitting around playing a game and one of my cousins leaned over and she whispered in my ear. She's like, you know, you should make one of these. And I was like, a light went off. I was like, yes, I should. And I, I had had a couple beers. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're like driving home and like all these ideas are coming to me. Like, I'm going to make a game. I'm going to call it this. I'm, I, you know, we're going to do this. We're putting it on Kickstarter. And, you know, I think everyone was kind of just, you know, humoring me a little bit of like, yeah, sure. Sure, Jordan, you're going to do this. But like. Two weeks later, I had a working prototype and I forced all those same people to play it again. I'm like, see, I told you I was going to make something. Um, we kind of played it around for an evening and they kind of looked at me afterwards and they're like, yeah, you you made something here. You actually have to do something with it. Mm -hmm. um, so then in 2019, uh, we went to Kickstarter, got the first game uh, Kickstarted funded. Uh, it's called Don't Get Stabbed and kind of everything <laughs> started from there. <laughs> Interesting. So I want to back up just a little bit when you mm -hmm. talked about kind of the origins, right? So you're just sitting around with a group of family and they're like, hey, you should make this game. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And, yeah. and you literally like within two weeks just like invented a game. You were already play testing it and you already had plans. Well, I'm going to go to Kickstarter. I'm going to mm -hmm. need this and this. Like, I mean, I've known you for a while, so how did all of that planning just pop in your head instantly? Like, if somebody asked me, hey, John, why don't you make a game? Like, the last thing I'm thinking about is my Kickstarter <laughs> campaign, right? So yeah. how did you get all this down in, like, one evening, like, a plan uh, laid out, ready to go? Like, I feel like I I had always kind of wanted to, I was, like, always, like, the creative one. Mm -hmm. And, like, our family and friend group, I, I was, like, I made escape rooms. Like oh. in my in uncle's basement for like nice. family events to like <laughs> I uh, love to, it. like I was the one that did stuff like that and yeah. like I've always kind of wanted to like do something where it's like kind of off on my own you know taking my creative skills and putting them into something that's you know tangible that everyone can enjoy and I never really kind of figured out what that was before like mm. you know I thought oh well, I should write a movie well I suck at writing <laughs> <laughs> oh I should make a comic book well kind of a crappy illustrator <laughs> yeah so like it, it never really had something that really kind of everything came together at once until it came to this of like yeah I can do this like I, I think I have all the skills necessarily to, to make this and put it together and then once I have it I'm pretty sure I know how to get it made um, it's like, you know, I was familiar with Kickstarter. I had done some stuff, you know, here sure. and there. So I'm like, I know, you know games are a huge thing on Kickstarter. So I can go to them. It, it was like this weird thing where all these different things that I've been like, like in my mind through years, finally had this one place to dive into when they all played off each other and worked. And it's like one of those once in a lifetime things of, I will never have like another aha movement like yeah. that again. <laughs> that was your one, right? Yes. <laughs> so that that's what's interesting to me is that, you know, it's, oh, well, you know, I suck at writing, oh, I suck at, you know, drawing, uh, this and that. And then just, it just happened to have that right idea at the right time mm -hmm. popped in your head. And what was that truly your motivation or was there something else that was also motivating or was that it? Just, it just, the light bulb went off and you were like madman oh, yeah. planning, it, getting it done. Yeah. It, it was just like, it had always been in the back of my head and just didn't have a way to come out into something that other people could have. And okay. once like that avenue was introduced to me, it just spilled out. Now, when you originally got the idea for Don't Get Stabbed, was this an idea that you already had or was it kind of a collaboration that, that came out of conversations and being with other people? It, it was. It really came out of uh, like me being a huge horror movie fan. Yeah, yeah I like, right. I've always loved horror movies. You can probably tell by the shelf behind me. Oh, yeah. I got to buy a horror movie stuff. Uh, I do want this FYI. <laughs> I got my eye on it since I got here. <laughs> but uh, like, I, I'm like, 
there was a couple things that had kind of really happened all at the same time. Like, you know, I had always loved horror movies. I was playing the Friday the 13th video game, like, at that time. For NES or the newer the, one? Like, the newer one. Yeah, yeah. Well, that game was fun. Yeah, man. it was fantastic. Especially when you're Jason. <laughs> so, like, it, like that was in my head, and, like, we, we were really into, like, party games and mm-hmm. stuff at the time. So, like, all these different little things, like, came together. Like, I, I tried to describe it as, like, if you took a, like, a kind of a casual game, took the Scream movies and took the Friday the 13th video game, you chopped them into pieces and put them back together Frankenstein style, then you get Duncan stabbed. I like it though. And it's fun that the creative process that, that every creative person goes through to kind of realize their vision. And yours was a game called Don't Get Stabbed. <laughs> of course I, it was. <laughs> I, I, absolutely, I absolutely love it. It wouldn't be Pulitzer Prize book or, or a, a, you know, a Oscar winner movie or anything. It would be something called Don't Get Stabbed. Love that, it, that would be me. <laughs> now, so you, you have this idea, you create the prototype cards, you play test it, you get what you want. And you know you need to get the Kickstarter, but there's one big thing in the way, and that's actually making the game and getting a a finished product, box, instructions, yeah. cards, artwork, rules, because we all know many instructions are not good in terms of no. rules. <laughs> I just bought a deck building game last week. I, I won't say the name of it, but... Uh, Super fun game. Instructions are absolutely worthless. Had to watch videos to figure it out. So there's a lot of, of what you need to do and, and what you need to work through before you launch the game. Mm-hmm. So when you finally launched that game, what was the reception like based on all that hard work you put in? Well, I went into it thinking like, you know, if it doesn't work, if it doesn't get funded, at least I did something cool yeah. that I can talk about. And like, I still had like prototypes. Like I had like a physical thing. So like, I have stuff like I can give to friends that like they can have forever, and, you know, you know, generations after me, like family members, like oh they can play Don't Get Stabbed, oh our great great uncle, <laughs> right, yeah, back, right. In the, back in the there early two thousands, you know. Um, so like I went in like obviously hoping to like get funded, but like I was going to be okay if I did it because it was still something cool. Um, so like we we ran the campaign and I think it was probably like two weeks in or something. And my fiance and I, we were driving to, to Indianapolis and it was like this close like, when we got in the car. And yeah. I was just like, that close, I could like, taste it. Um, so we're like driving and then finally like we go through and he checks on his phone because I told I wasn't allowed to check as I was driving. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> Even enough. I would have been checking. Safety I, feature. You check every like two minutes when you're running a Kickstarter. <laughs> sure. Um, so we, I made him check for me and he's like, yeah, it's fun to know you did it. And it was just like, all right. That's now, awesome. now I've got to actually do this <laughs> what was that feeling like though that moment you realized you got the funding you needed so now it's time to move to that next level which is obviously creating the game manufacturing distribution all that yeah but what was that feeling when he told you you did it it was a mix of uh, like a huge amount of pride yeah and kind of like fulfillment of like sure you know, this is something I did now that no one can kind of take away from me. And also, inner panic. Of, <laughs> right. Crap. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know what I'm supposed to do to get this made, but now, like, you actually have to do it. Yeah. Like, and, you know, for me, I was a first-time creator. Like, ha- had I sourced companies to make it? Yeah. Did I Have I ever actually been through that process before? No. So, right. like, you, you learn as you go. And thankfully, like, you know, there's Facebook groups and stuff of, like, a lot of other creators. So, like... If something doesn't make sense or I'm like this, I don't understand how to do this, you can go there, you can ask people, like the entire game making community is amazing. Um, yeah, like, they it's all support great. each other. Yeah. Um, you know, and I try to do that back now. I'm like, yeah, I still go to those ones and they're like, you know, hey, does anyone know this? I'm like, yeah, go talk to that guy. That guy is there. You, you want to talk yeah, to Yeah, yeah. He will hook you up. I'm like, I got you covered. Networking. Exactly. So it's who you know, right? It's all about <laughs> who you know, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, we talked a lot about like how it made you feel. Uh, I know that if if I was doing a campaign and that campaign got funded, uh, I would be in sheer terror because <laughs> now there's a there's a degree of responsibility. Yeah. Because enough people have given you their money. Yes. And you've reached this goal that you said, "Hey, if I get this much money from all of you people, then I can make this game for you and other people." Yeah. And so the people gave you that money you have to deliver yes you can't just be like well thanks and then yes. disappear <laughs> like you have this this responsibility i don't want to use the word burden 
responsibility is better. You have a responsibility to these people who gave you their money yeah. to make this game. And now you have to make this game. And I, I just, I can't wrap my head around the emotions and the feelings that someone will be going through knowing that they now carry this huge weight on their shoulders of responsibility. Yeah, it, I, I think a lot of creators, when they get funded, they think like, oh wow, I made all this money <laughs> to do this. And I'm like, I can't think that way. Right. I didn't make that money yet. Like I am a steward of other people's money mm -hmm. until they get the product. Exactly. And so like, I kind of built that into my brain of like, I have a responsibility to these people to get it to them one way or another. If it ends up something goes wrong and like there's a thousand dollar fee that I didn't know was there, that's on me. Right. Like, I got to pay that. Yeah. I have a responsibility now. Thankfully that didn't happen. <laughs> Good. It worked yes. out pretty well. <laughs> but like, you know, I, I go in thinking I'm a steward of someone else's money until they get this product. Yeah. Now, before we move on to talk about some of the other games that you've created, there's just another question that's like in my mind that I have to ask. Um, when you were going through this Kickstarter campaign, were there any negative experiences? Did was there did did something happen to where maybe somebody chose to say, "I don't want to do this" or "I, I don't like what you're doing"? Like, was, was there anything? And the only reason I'm asking is there's always two sides to a coin, right? Mm -hmm. And we always want to focus on the positive, but I think you know, creators, whether you're a content creator, a game creator, what have you is you need to be prepared for both sides, right? Yeah. So was there anything on that negative side that happened that maybe you weren't prepared for that you had to work through? Yeah, so uh, I didn't have that many negatives. That's great, say, that's a good thing, but yes. But like, there, there is one video that comes to mind and like there there was a, a like, you know, I Google don't get stabbed like every day just saying, yeah. if someone's talking about it, I wanna sure. know what's going on. Yeah. And, and on some forum somewhere, someone had posted about it talking about how inappropriate it was and it's like this the downfall of moral gaming and stuff which yeah, wow it's, it's the internet um so the it, it, it's, <laughs> Sorry, that's, it's, it's, it's like, the moral fabric yes, unraveling i, I like, single-handedly have undone america it's this, it's this animated <laughs> card game that's gonna destroy today's youth yep, exactly not porn <laughs> Don't get stabbed is what's going to do it, right? Exactly. Oh, my God. Well, that's good so, that that was the only negative. Yeah, and that was the only thing. And, like, you know, it, when you when you create something and put it out for people, especially on Kickstarter, like, they're going to judge. Oh, that's absolutely. Part of the, that's part of the yeah, process. absolutely. Understanding the difference between a critic and a hater. Ah, uh, good point. Is very important in doing it. Sure. Of, like, there's people that want to make things better that are trying to tell you, this isn't meeting my needs as a right. product and this is why I won't buy it or I bought it and it didn't do this. So mm -hmm. the next time maybe take this into consideration. Yeah. And then there's the people that it does not matter what you do. They're just going to hate it because yes. the world is full of those people. The world is full <laughs> of haters. But yeah. you know, those people that are willing to kind of, you know, give you that objective feedback and that criticism that's not to insult you, it's to actually help you get better. Yeah. A lot of people can't accept criticism. No. I try to, but there's definitely times I'll fully admit that I'm, I blew up when I shouldn't have, right? But you try to embrace it because to your point, you can learn from it and that's how we get better. Yeah. So I'm glad that that didn't turn into like a, some crazy hater experience. And, you know, hopefully uh, you were able to put some type of improvement in place to, to better whatever it is you were trying yeah. to better. Like so. put it, whenever someone, you know, you come across a criticism and like when something is the creative that you made, like, don't get stabbed as my baby. Yes. You know, and so when people criticize my baby, sometimes it's like, <laughs> right. you know, that's right in the chest. So that's yeah. not a stab, but like you, ah, stab. Um, but like, you take a little bit of time to like, take your emotions out of it, yep. go back to it, and are like, okay, what are, like, what are they really trying to do here? Like, most of the time, people are trying to help. Yes. And so you just got to learn to look through that lens. I think that's, that's really good advice for anybody, and not just somebody creating content. It's anybody. It could, it could be with your job. It could be with your family. It could be with a friend. It could be creating content, right? Anything. We have to be open to constructive criticism yeah. and block the haters, yes, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> excellent. So, let's spend some time about your other games because Don't Get Stabbed is not the only game no. that you have. So, uh, not counting Nuns with Nunchucks, 
How many games do you currently have under Rookie Mage? We have six games. That's impressive, so, man. So you're a company that's only, what, four years old? Yep. Three it, years old? It's, you know, as, as soon as Don't Get Stabbed, like, I knew it was a thing. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to make a career out of this. I'm like, okay, I've got to make more games. Like, yes. I can't put all my eggs in one basket there you go. type thing. Yep. Um, plus, you know, I had nieces and nephews that were getting really mad. <laughs> knowing that Uncle Jordan was making a game that they yeah. weren't allowed to play. Yeah, so right. <laughs> I had to start making games that they were allowed to play. Sure, sure. Um, so, like, I've got, you know, family games now. One of them's about wizards. They teleport poop. Um, just to show how ridiculous my mindset when I do it with people. I, I will pause you for a second there. My daughter and I play Portal Potties, <laughs> which is the game Jordan's talking about, and we love it. Um, I mean, my daughter's 11, uh -huh. right? So any game where you literally move poop around, she's automatically interested, right? Yeah. And it's just an easy... The thing I love about your games, and we'll talk about the other ones here in a moment, is that your games are very easy to pick up and play. Yeah. I don't need to watch a video. I can read your instruction booklet <laughs> and actually follow it, which I love because I mentioned earlier, it was a huge pet peeve of mine. Uh, you do a really good job of making sure somebody can open that booklet and within five to ten minutes know exactly how to play the game, no video necessary, which is great. Yeah. So Portal Potties is awesome. We love that in our house. Don't get stabbed. We play it when we have gatherings. But you have four other games, too. So what are those other games? That you sure. have? We have the Unseen, which is like a social deduction game about a cult taking over a town. <laughs> we have yet to play that, but I'm looking forward to uh, it. Next yeah. time we have four or five people together, we're going to play it. If you want to see people get cut through it in Evil Fast. <laughs> I can't the wait. The Unseen will roll that out of people. Uh, we've got uh, Full of It, which is inappropriate conversation starters. I love that game. Uh, we've got uh, Oh Nuts, which is a kind of family game mm -hmm. about squirrels fighting over nuts for the winter. <laughs> and then we have... Uh, zombies want pizza, which is uh, zomb or your all pizza chefs, and you're getting together gross ingredients to make a pizza. So the zombie wants the pizza. And one. I love the theme that you have, and it's it's very much like fun stuff, gross stuff, and your horror element yes. thrown in. So you appeal to the, the whole spectrum across the board: men, women, all ages, doesn't matter. You have six games currently, you're about to have a seven, and nobody, no matter who you are, you could pick up one of your games and find that one Rookie Mage game that you really like. Yep, that, that was the plan of like, <laughs> I want to have something that, that or something for everyone. Like, yeah. you, we yeah. don't always like, you You don't like horror movies, so you don't, don't like, don't get sad. Well, maybe you're like, oh, nuts. Yeah. Um, you know, you know well, I don't really like mechanics. I'm like, well, here's conversation starters. Like, yep. it's a great way for just to get people together and talk. You know, it's low barrier to entry, you don't have to learn anything, you just gotta talk. The thing about Full of It that I like is I like taking the cards and, and just like using them to conversate with people when they don't know that I'm doing it. <laughs> so like if I'm at work and we're having a Teams conversation, I might find one that's work appropriate, you know, to put it's it in like, very few of those. <laughs> I mean, you know, or I can wordsmith it a little bit to yeah. make it appropriate depending on who I'm talking to, right? And just just throwing those out there. Maybe I'm bored on Facebook and I'll jump on somebody's post and just do some random comment of, of, of a line from one of the cards and just to see if it sparks conversation. There's different fun stuff that you can do with it. And, and I do like that. But again, with all ages, everybody has the game that they really like for that scenario. Um, now, with just your company only being a few years old and already having six games, how do you find time to create a game, play test a game, get the game created, get the game distributed, like yeah. kickstart it, advertise it. How have you made six games <laughs> in like four years? Sometimes yeah. creators make one game for life yes. and that's all they make. You have six in four years. Yeah, so I, I very much get tunnel vision when I set out a goal. So like once I knew like, okay, this is, I'm gonna make a career out of this. I'm like, the only way you can make a career out of this is if you have more than one game. Mm -hmm. Like like. You think of any big publishing game company, they don't just have one, they've got multiple ones. So I just sat down and was like, okay, I'm just gonna churn these out as fast as I can, but also I've gotta make sure they still have the heart and soul yes. in it. I, like, I gotta make sure they're still play tested. So like, you know, I did a whole project management thing. Like I've got a little of sheet of all the different phases. <laughs> of like, okay, it has to go to this phase, and if it doesn't pass this play testing phase, then it has to go back to this concepting phase mm -hmm. and just, being extremely organized yeah and, and also going back to the understanding criticism and haters mm -hmm. of like there are people that doesn't matter what it like some people won't like a certain part a certain type of game sure and like 
that doesn't necessarily mean the game isn't good. It, right. it might just mean that this isn't the audience that I'm looking yes. for. And like maybe what I thought was the audience for this is actually this group, not this group. So going back through that, trying to understand that and, and kind of just organizing everything in a way where you're not just like looking at a whiteboard full of mush. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, how on earth would like, this ever happen? Oh my like, god. Yes. You know, some like crazy, like <laughs> the worst like flow chart you've ever seen. Yes. Just like a monstrosity of a flow chart. <laughs> right. Now what was my diamond again? <laughs> I didn't write the key down. You yep. know? Like, yeah, he's like, I'm I'm not a particularly organized person. So like I had to create a system yeah. and create a system that worked for me of like it probably would never work for anyone else, but in my crazy mind, this is the system that worked. Um, so I, I just stuck to that, trying to keep myself organized, but also made sure that like when, especially like the initial concepting phase, is this fun? Yeah. Of like, it, would I enjoy to sit and play yeah. this? Cause like, if I'm not having fun making it, I really doubt anyone's gonna have fun playing exactly. it. Exactly. Um, so and there's been times where, you know, I've started a game and like it got really far and I you stopped and shared to yourself of like, I, I'm not enjoying making this game. Yeah. So I don't know why I'm making it. Exactly. If there's no motivation, if that, even if you're putting your heart and soul into it, but you're not getting that emotional response back, if you're not attached to it, good point. How is somebody else, like, say, me, if I'm just at a game store thumbing through, oh, what's this game? You know, because, yeah. like, like, I feel like you can tell a lot of times when someone just put crap on a package and put a sticker on <laughs> yeah. it and try to sell it to you. Sure, sure. Uh, and that's not what I wanted my company to do. No, of like, course you know, not. Like, you know, I purposely put myself out there of like, I'm the one that made these games. If you have a problem with it, you know, I'm the guy that made it, so send me the nasty yeah, email. Absolutely. Um, I'm not here just to you know, make a buck by putting out whatever. I want to make sure everything I set out is something that you know has a little bit of peace of me in it and that I hope people are going to have fun with it. That's, I think that's a great outlook. Now, you had mentioned project management. I just want to dive into that <laughs> real quickly because yeah. um, I know we're running short on time. But I think this is an aspect of game design and game manufacturing that people don't necessarily realize is that all of these things happen on the back end. And much like any other business that you would do, there's always project managers, yes. right? Project managers, the most organized people. They have their sheets. They have their charts. They know what to do. This is like clockwork. This is routine for them. They've got this spreadsheet that links to this one. And they've got this one. And they go through it. And it's meticulous. And nobody understands it but them. But they're good at what they do. And they yep. get it done, right? I've, I've worked with many project managers. But you also mentioned that you're terrible at project yes, managing. <laughs> so how does somebody who's horrible at project uh, managing, who's also starting a business and designing a game, create a project management system that works for them, that allows them to take that game from concept to completion? Uh, a lot of uh, YouTube videos. Okay. <laughs> hey, fair enough. But dude, we YouTube everything else. Yes, it changes my garbage anything. disposal yeah. YouTube that, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean. Doesn't matter what it is, YouTube. Yep. If you go to YouTube, you can learn anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, I do have a couple more questions here. So we've been talking a lot about how you came up with the concepts, how you created the games. You do have this amazing business that we're sitting in right now. What do you do? You do this full time? Do you still have a job? Yeah, I moved over to doing this full time uh, about a year ago. Okay. Um, and for a while I went part time because, um, you know, I, I knew that to, to make it successful, I had to like make the jump. Of, like, sure. I can't keep coming home from, you know, a, an eight hour a day job, being in traffic for an hour, coming home, eating right. for 15 minutes, and then sitting back down to work another six hours. Right. Like that was just, that was fine for the first one. Right. That's not going to be sustainable. We're good forever. after that. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, I, I talked to, to my boss uh, where I was working and we kind of worked something out where like, okay, like, or I'm going to move down to part time with them, so I have the rest of my time to start working on this. Um, so, like, I kind of went into it as like this is like your once in a life opportunity to build something. Absolutely. So, like, you can't mess this up. You got to do this. And yeah. like, you don't want to go back and be like, oh man, I had this cool opportunity, and I spent all that time playing video games <laughs> instead of you know doing what I should have been doing. Right. So, like, you know, you just you psych yourself up, you, you sit down, you figure it out, and it just you power through how did it feel to tell your boss even if you had a great relationship mm -hmm. with your boss how did it feel that day that you walked in and you said at this point i'm able to make 
rookie mage games, my career, my full time job, mm. I am now quitting. Yeah. Like, how did that feel to like, leave one world and enter another like that? It, it was uh, awesome. Yeah, I'll bet. Like, you know, it's, it's all definitely I can't awesome. even fathom what like, that would feel yeah, like. Like, so. like, I, like the, I liked the company I was working for. I had a great boss. And, like, I had hinted for, like, months of, like, mm, you know, don't, you know uh, rookie mage games is yeah. pretty well. Don't know how I'm going to continue to be able to do this. Sure. So, like, they weren't shocked by any means. Like, I made sure to plant some seeds. Um, but it, it, it's amazing, but it's also terrifying. Uh, yeah. Now I've got to figure out how to get health insurance. Right. <laughs> that was just like so, dude. It is so funny that you said that. That shows yeah. how old we are yes. now, right? Because it's not like, oh, can I get my rent money? Yeah. Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to eat ramen for a couple weeks. No, yep. how do I get health insurance? Yes. I am almost forty. Right. I, I need insurance. insurance. <laughs> That's so funny. Our heads yeah. are right in the same spot there. So yeah, it, it's you. You kind of lose this safety net. Yeah. Um, like, you really. Know, insurance retirement plans, all that yep. kind of stuff. Like that's all just wrapped up into our jobs. Yeah. Now my job is making games, but I've got to figure out all that other stuff too. Yeah. To make sure that, you know, I get hit by a bus. I don't, <laughs> You're like, covered. Yeah. I don't lose the company <laughs> in my home. <laughs> you don't have some HR package that's yes. already like pre-designed for your role yeah. and this and that. You have to make that happen. You have to make everything happen. Yes. So I can imagine it, that it's, it's exciting, but mm -hmm. it's also scary. It's unknown. Right? I mean, you're like, I, I'm literally quitting my job and leaving this type of workforce to start a business. And I'm going to see this business through and it's going to be successful. Yeah. That's, I'm sure most people would be completely frightful of that, but also very excited. And I can see the excitement and, and compassion on you. And with that, I'm going to ask my final question, which is, what is the future of all of this? What does Rookie Mage Games look like? Three years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Like when I'm an old man buying a game for my grandchild, mm -hmm. what am I going to see from Rookie Mage Games? Uh, I think over the next couple of years, you know, obviously Nuts with Nunchucks is like a yeah. big project. We're going to get through that. Absolutely. Uh, but like our the Don't Get Stabbed has been a very popular IP for us. So like we're probably going to do some more with that. Cool. Um, either Looks looking to expanding it, um, kind of reimagining it. There's a lot of different things. Um, but also like just continuing to find different ways to get people to have fun. Yeah. Of like, uh, I try to like to say like when people buy one of my games, they're, they're not buying, they're not paying me for a game that's paper and plastic or whatever. They're paying me for an experience. Yes. So how can then we're an experienced company then like we make board games, but we're an experienced company. So thinking about new ways that we can provide experiences is really how we're probably gonna thrive in the long run. I love that. I love that it's focused about the experience. You're absolutely right, because if you have a poor experience, guess who's not coming back, exactly. right? So as long as you're making sure people are having great experiences, which all six of your games provide, and I have no doubt in my mind that Nuns with Nunchucks will continue on that experience. I also like that you're open to suggestions. I know I've bounced <laughs> Several ideas. Oh, you're yeah, like, definitely. you're like, nope. Already looked into it two years ago. Yep. Nope. So we did it last year. Nope. Can't do that. It's too risque. Nope. Too violent. You know. So it's like one day I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna, gonna stick it. the landing, and you're gonna be like, you know what, John? It's a great idea. It's brilliant. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time, Jordan. I'm, Thanks, I'm, I'm just so overly excited for you. I'm appreciative that you invited us here to the HQ today to talk to you. And I'm really excited to see how well Nuns with Nunchucks does. And again, Tuesday, March 28th, 2023 on Kickstarter. Thanks, Jordan. And we will talk again soon. Great. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.